there's going to be like 5 billion Africans by the end of the century. And they're going to be pouring in to Europe and North America. And this is going to absolutely suck. Well, 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 what do we have here? White supremacist Nick Fuentes dog walk Africans and Africans are quiet. It's crickets. You don't hear them flooding Twitter, adding them, denigrating them, making panel discussions. No, they only do that when it comes to us. They ain't going to say that twice, Addy. But Nick Fuentes has been dog walking Africans in this clip that I'm going to play. And I'm just trying to figure out where the Africans at. You know, he talked about how Africans will be a billion in population and they're going to flood North America and Europe. And it's going to be a bad situation um, because these people are low IQ, uncivilized cannibals. I mean, he went in and um, it's not my business. I, I think I think black Americans need to mind our business. Now, he did take shots at us, but it wasn't nothing we ain't already heard before. What he said don't mean nothing. It holds no weight. But he was right specific about the people he was talking about. You know, Africans like to say, well, and you know, white people, these white supremacists can't tell the difference between the two of us. They, that's a lie. Because it seems like white supremacists have been calling y'all out and delineating for us. Do I need to go back to the Daily Wire when that one interviewer called out Joanne Reed, the Congolese immigrant, when she tried to say that, you know, her people built America and she's part of Jim Crow. And he said, no, no, no. You are an African immigrant. Your parents is from Congo and Guyanese. You ain't got nothing to do with America or black American history. I mean, call tile. You guys remember that clip? And now we have this white supremacist, Nick Fuentes, who has been, you know, African's favorite white supremacist. We'll talk about that later. Now he's delineating. He was very specific about who he was talking about. He did mention black Americans, but he was specifically talking about Africans and he denigrated and dog walked y'all. And it's not my business. I, 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 we need to deal with Nick Fuentes, uh, as black Americans. Um, but again, we're used to dealing with white supremacists, Africans and not. you guys are bootlicks and coons. Africans and Caribbeans are the biggest coons. They love white daddy and white daddy will turn around and just, um, dog walk them like they doing. But later on, we're going to get into some other clips and discuss how much these very same Africans love this very same white supremacist who was denigrating them in this video. So you guys watch the clip and I'll be back with my second commentary. The continent of Africa, all these uh, people, they talk about the depopulation agenda. The population of Africa is exploding. Congo, Tanzania, Nigeria... All these countries are going to have a population explosion. There's going to be like 5 billion Africans by the end of the century. And they're going to be pouring in to Europe and North America. And this is going to absolutely suck. They're going to turn the whole planet into Africa. You are going to be chased by cannibals. We're not even talking about gangbangers. We're not even talking about the blacks you're used to which already are troublesome, okay, quarrelsome. We're not talking about uh, black people who are sometimes endearing with their funny antics and their music, but may rob you at gunpoint. We're talking about, we're talking about black as night Africans with body paint from head to toe running after you to eat you because they're cannibals, because they think there's nuggets of gold in your head. Like, we're talking about a level of N, of, of black N-word that you are not used to, that you have never encountered. We're not talking 85 IQ American blacks. We're talking 65 IQ West African blacks, Central African blacks. These people have never seen a two-story building in their life. They're not illiterate. They don't have a written language at all. Like, so it's just another level. This is advanced darkness. <laughs> this is advanced darkness. This is a level of civilizational darkness you've never heard of. You've never even seen. They will make BLM look like Isaac Newton by comparison. They will make you long to live in an all African-American neighborhood. You'll, you'll live among the blacks now and, and breathe a sigh of relief. You'd be like, wow, what a... 
This is so different. These people will be breaking into the electrical transformers to harvest the oil to cook food, to cook fecal matter, to eat. That They will be breaking your house, stripping the copper wire, and, and I don't even know, I mean, doing like magic with it, like attempting alchemy, not even selling it, but using alchemy or attempting it. So anyway, um, people are not prepared for this. This is like World War Z. Ever see the Brad Pitt zombie movie when they, they're climbing on top of each other to get into Israel? It's going to be like that. And uh, anyway. Whew, well, damn. What do you guys think? I mean, I told y'all he really went in. He had a lot of things to say that we can unpack. But, you know, we're, we're used to rhetoric like this for white supremacists, right? We know how to deal with them, but I, I don't think that we need to be uh, the people to respond to him on behalf of Africans. I think Africans need to do that. Um, but yeah, he went in. Now, I want to remind you guys, this is the same Nick Fuentes that sat on African and Caribbean panels. If you guys not familiar with just pearly things, if you remember last year, she was based in the UK and she had Nick Fuentes on and Nick Fuentes disrespected um, King Richard's this goofball clown Nigerian um, got disrespected to his face and he allowed his girlfriend to be disrespected. If y'all didn't know, King Richard is another cool Nigerian who's like dating a white woman over in Europe. And when Nick Fuentes said, mm, well, I don't like people who interracial date and like you or whatever. And he was sitting there. Literally, this man was comfortable to sit on his couch and disrespect this man, this Nigerian man, King Richards, and his girlfriend, and nothing happened. Um, if you guys remember that, let me insert the clip right here. So, hey, it is what it is. And um, the Italians, we do not claim you. Oh, oh, hey, the Italians don't claim you. You're the one dating a black guy. The Italians don't claim me. They don't claim you. Oh, no, they claim me. <laughs> they claim me. I don't think so. They do. Italian guys, yeah. Italian, Tell an we're Italian big, guy about lovers. your affinity for black guys. That'll go over real well. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Nick. <laughs> so, you guys, I know you remember the situation with just pearly things. She was running the Manosphere, and she was based over in the UK, and all her employees were African and Caribbean. And the fact that, that she allowed a white supremacist on her platform to disrespect this man while he was sitting there. And it was just a whole mess. If you guys remember the whole situation, she had like two Jamaicans and two Africans. It used to just be all pretty much the people in the UK built up pearly things and they would talk. Remember, we had this discussion how they were allow her to say stuff because they were ignorant and they want us. And that's what a lot of white people do, particularly Americans, white Americans. They'll go get like these foreigners and they'll, uh, they'll allow them to say goofy shit because they know they're not going to get any pushback. So, but you guys remember when all these bootlick Jamaicans and that Nigerian woman on there, I mean, just pearly thing was the slave master. She was running them and come to find out she was taking like a large percentage of their money. They had all these, these crazy contracts. You guys remember the one Jamaican who came out and he started complaining about just pearly things, but all of them are fake. The point of the matter is this. This white supremacist was allowed to disrespect this guy and he ain't say nothing. And he didn't even defend his girlfriend and his girlfriend wound up leaving him. So that was that part. And like I said, these are the very people who will sit up in these same white supremacist face and Kiki and Kaka and allow disrespect. And now that he's coming out and he even calls out Nigeria. But, you know, King Rich won't make a video about that. I don't even like King Richards. King Richards is a anti-black person. He does not like black women. If you go back on his channel, he had a lot of smoke for ADOS and FBA. He had a lot of smoke for black Americans. He's a clown. He's a goofball. And let's go to the next clip. So the next clip, we're going to talk about how fresh and fit, the funky Arab and the dirty bohemian and the panel of low self-esteem black women. I think the women sitting next to Nick Fuentes were like a Haitian and they was like cheering him on to say the nigga word. This is why I don't mess with these tethers. But let's watch this clip and I'll be back with my commentary. She's joking. Okay. <laughs> no. I hope so. Do it, Nick. Do it. No, I can't. Hey, I'm sitting in here. Do it next so you can get banned again. Right. <laughs> 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 I'm 
Come on, brother. You can say it. Yeah. Say it. Come on, man. I want you to say, say it. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What you got? Yeah. You want me to say it? Yes. yes. Say it. Is anyone going to hit me if I say it? No. Come on, Nick. What you got? All right, nigger. Yo, it is amazing to me how a word can get everybody so fucking mad, bro. Wait, hold on. Yo, we asked for it. Yeah, yeah, give it. We didn't ask for it. You guys asked for it. I definitely want to know what. I definitely want to know what's on your top because you gonna definitely know what's on mine. Crack oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Ooh, you want to wipe your kids in the um, future? Yeah. We got, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hold on. We got uh, up next. Uh, Do you say that on your hey, YouTube channel often? Yeah. Oh god. No. Oh. No. 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 <laughs> like, but how do you use it? This is free speech, baby. Version, okay. First gotta be able to say it. Like, it right? How do you use it though? No, I agree. Neutral. In free speech, so then you cannot okay. hang out with him. Damn. Oh, okay. It was well, used. Yeah. Uh, what? And see, this is why delineation is a must. These people think this is funny. I cannot stand these immigrants. And these videos I put together so you guys can get educated on why Pan-Africanism is a cancer. We need to get rid of it and never, ever be Pan-Africanist. This is not funny. This is what they do. This is why Africans and Caribbeans are in the state that they're in. Because they do shit like this. See, black Americans don't do stuff like this. We don't cozy up with white supremacists. We have a few coons, but not like this. These are non-black Americans edging on a white supremacist to say the N-word when the N-word was only really referred to black Americans. That is a part of our history and what we dealt with in America. And this is the problem with we're all black. This is the problem I have with you. We are black people. We're not. Myron coon clown that whole panel of women is pathetic and this is why a lot of black women get labeled the way they do you have no fucking respect for yourself because black women no black women from anywhere should be on these two people's podcasts who said they don't even like black women and they don't do dark riders or something you guys remember that this is a sickness and now they laughing and joking is funny of this white man saying in the N-word. Something is really wrong with these people and why I want separation. This delineation needs to be fast forward because this type of shit right here. These are type of people that will allow policies into play that will harm us because they are so weak and they love white people. These are the type of people you can never have at the table, ever making decisions. Immigrants, particularly Africans and Caribbeans, have been one of the worst things that happened to the black community. And, and a lot of you who may be African and Caribbean, listen to this, may feel some kind of way. You guys have been a detriment to black Americans. And we have turned a blind eye for years. And now with this ADOS movement delineation, y'all and y'all feelings, but y'all are a detriment you come to this country instead of having respect and listen to the people such as the black Americans who are trying to tell you what the situation is. You cozy up to white supremacists. We've been seeing this time and time again with you coons, you Caribbean and African coons. But the minute somebody say something about y'all and criticize y'all and y'all culture, y'all get all upset and start, you know, hurling insults at us. This is what y'all do. This is not a one-off, and I don't want to hear you, Black America, so much. oh, it's not all of them. It's all of them. I, I'm tired of, well, 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 all Africans not like this, and the, all Caribbeans, all of them. It is time to delineate from all of them. The ones that you're cool with, they got to go too. They got to be casualties. 
We need clear separation and delineation. Because this right here doesn't even scratch the surface of the things that these people do. And you want them in our politics. You want them making decisions. These people will probably pass a law to put us back on a plantation if they could. Because that's how they are. They are not to be trusted. They're not built like us. They're not. How many times we have to keep saying it? They are not built like us. One, they fled from their countries. They didn't stay there and fight to make anything great in their countries. That was the first failure. Once they left their countries of origin and didn't decide to fight to fix it, to make things better for them, what makes you think they can lead us in anything? I don't even understand how we even gave them a voice in America. Why do we allow them to speak? Y'all don't get to speak. That's our fault. Sit up here allowing people who fled their country, who couldn't fix shit, build shit, do nothing, come over here and be in a position of power or leadership over us? Are you crazy? This is the problem. It's our fault. Pan-Africanism, we're all black. No, go your ass back to your Caribbean island or your African country, and I want to see you go over there and stand up and talk to some white supremacists and, and ask them to call you whatever derogatory name they call you on your country. Go sit over there. I am so sick of y'all. Y'all better take this information, and delineation is a must. It is a must. Gone are the days are we going to bat for the diaspora. Let these people handle Nick Fuentes himself. We have to step back. But I know it ain't going to happen. When something happened to one of these people, when white supremacists show their, show their hands to them people, we need to turn a blind eye. Not my problem. Not our problem. But these people are dangerous. And somebody going to be like, well, how, how, how are Africans and Caribbean immigrants worse than white supremacy? They're worse because they look like us and they be in spaces like this. They are a danger and a detriment to us. This needs to be addressed. This needs to be addressed. There needs to be closing of some ranks and there needs to be some separation ASAP. Because I don't find this funny sitting with a known white supremacist and laughing like it's a joke at our expense. These very people are only in America because of us. All these filthy freeloading tethers around this table is only in America thriving and laughing because of us. And you think it's a good idea to bring a white supremacist up to drop the N-word. These people are a danger. I'm telling you, they are worse than the white supremacists. They are worse. I've said this before. I don't care what none of y'all say. These African and Caribbean immigrants are worse than white supremacy. And the problem is the danger is because we think that they're our people and we let them in. We let them in our spaces. We let them into our schools. We let them into our organizations. We let them into our politics. Thinking now people, they are dangerous. Very dangerous. Keep these people as far away from us as we can. Black Americans, we're going to have to wake up. We're going to have to really wake up and say to hell with these Pan-Africanists, all you goofy ass Pan-Africanists, you Umar worshipers, and say, you know what? We need to get away from y'all. Y'all dangerous. This is, this is dangerous behavior. And again, I'm not saying that black Americans ain't got our own coons. We'll deal with our own coons. But this right here, mm-mm. We just seen these people, how they conform to white supremacists and racist people. We've seen it. And now that same racist white person that they are laughing with is dog walking them. I would love to know what Myron got to say, what Nick Fuentes said about Africans. He's an African. I bet you he wouldn't be laughing that hard. 
I bet you that. This is despicable behavior. But you guys, tell me what you can think. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. If you get mad, even if you yes, get offended, so what you gonna do? Because I guarantee you, you can't beat me 